And we continue to bless us. Bless us through this Christmas season. Help us to understand the birth of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we ask come in. Uh, at this time, we had a pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You've had your package. Let's look at the agenda first. Any additions or corrections to the agenda? Anything added or be taken off? This is the first agenda. If not, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Okay. Councilman Trippett made the motion to. Woman. Dobbins made the second. My question. <laughs> they all have to keep me straight. Uh, all in favor say aye. All opposed? The agenda's approved. You have the minutes of your regular November 15th. Any package or any correction or addition to them? There's a slight change that needs to be made on the first page where, it's, where it says approval of agenda. It says Mayor Wright asked for the approval of the gen agenda, and then it says Mayor J.C. Tripp, but that should say Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, that's the only the difference. I, I, I saw it. I need it. With that correction, I make a motion that we accept the minutes. Second. With this change made in the uh, minutes, uh, and we've got a motion by Councilman Trippett and a second by uh, Councilman. Day. <laughs> All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. The minutes are approved. And I'm assuming that everyone has read the closed session minutes. Thank you, motion. We extend closed session meeting minutes. Councilor McGowan made the motion that we approve the closed session minutes. Uh, Councilwoman Dobbins made the second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. aye. All opposed? Aye, uh, have it. Motion uh, approved. Let me get back to my page here. All right. That, this time we have our first open forum. Anyone wish to speak to the council at this time, come forward, state your name, address, and hold your comments to three minutes, please. Name's Faye Wright, 725 Power 10 Road. It might be a little late, but has anybody thought about putting a stoplight down there at Tony 
store all that traffic for a year is going to be coming off of 70 through Woodson's Mills. Can somebody contact DOT and see if we can get a stoplight down there? That intersection has actually been part of the discussions with the TAC in Wilson. It's a transportation committee. And they are looking at that intersection and all of that area on Wilson's Mills Road with the increased traffic. So it's on their radar. I'm, I'm not sure what they're planning to do there, but they are planning to do something. I hope they do something because don't them poor people that coming off of Power 10 Road won't never get on the road. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If close our first open form. That's six thirty-five. And go into our regular business. At this time we uh I must have Jay Sharp to present the 2020-21 uh, audit. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Sharp. I'm the uh, audit partner in charge of the town's 21 audit. Um, appreciate you having me out tonight. Uh, so I have a short presentation. I believe you have copies in, in front of you if you want to follow along. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the audit proceedings. Uh, then I'll talk about the results of the 21 audit. And then finally, I'll give some uh, financial analysis of the town's financial situation at the end of 21. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, status, uh, field work has been completed. Uh, the financial statements have been prepared. Um, the audit was submitted to the local government commission for their review, and they have approved it. Uh, so the audit has been um, issued and completed uh, for 21. A little bit of roles and objectives, a little bit of background on what we do. Um, we don't just come in and start crunching numbers. Uh, there's some procedures we do ahead of time, some planning procedures. Uh, most of those revolve around internal controls uh, with the town's financials. Um, we gain an understanding or get an update of any changes in the internal controls uh, for the year. And then sometimes we do test controls. And so for 2021, we tested controls over cash disbursements, over payroll, and over credit cards. Um, some for, so from our understanding of internal controls in place and from the results of our test controls, we perform what you call a risk assessment. It's a risk-based audit approach. So we're going to assess risk to each of the major financial reporting areas for the town. Um, we're going to concentrate our audit procedures on the higher risk areas, um, but we are going to look at all the significant financial reporting areas for the town. Um, and we do this uh, to gain sufficient audit evidence to render an opinion on the financial statements. That's why you hire us, is to give an opinion. Um, and we're going to talk about that opinion here in a second. Uh, but the opinion itself concentrates on whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement. So the results of the 2021 audit, um, happy to report the scope and the timing of the audit were on track. Um, if you remember for 2020, the LGC did extend the deadlines to January 31st. Uh, they did not do that for 2021. It was back to the regular deadlines, um, but we did submit the audit on time. Uh, no issues there. Um, I'm happy to report the town received an unmodified opinion on the financial statements for 2021. Uh, that is the best possible opinion you can receive. Uh, it should be, is the opinion the town should strive for year in and year out. Uh, basically means a clean opinion on the financial statements for 2021. Um, I'm happy to report during audit proceedings, um, there were no material weaknesses or no significant deficiencies noted during the audit process. Um, the prior year audit finding was corrected. There were no findings for 2021. I mean, that's the first time the town's not had any findings for the last couple of years. So no findings for 2021. Um, as a result of our audit procedures, we did uh, have several minor audit adjustments, just some routine adjustments, nothing uh, unusual uh, with those for 2021. In addition to our audit, we're required to issue a separate, what we call a communications letter. Uh, there's four major talking points with that. 
Um, first of all, if there's any accounting policy changes, major accounting policy changes that affect your financial statements, we're required to communicate that to you. Uh, there was one implemented for 2021, um, had to do with the fiduciary funds. Um, in previous audits, those were uh, the, you had a trust fund, uh, those were reported <laughs> separately. Um, because of changes in accounting standards, uh, those are now combined with the government funds. Um, so they're not uh, shown separately on the financial statements anymore. Uh, one of the areas we look at in close detail are estimates. Uh, the two major estimates the town has with this financials are depreciation uh, and allowance for doubtful accounts. Uh, all the estimates related to those two issues uh, uh, appeared reasonable, no issues there. Um, I'm happy to report we had no disagreements with management and no difficulties encountered whatsoever with the uh, towns during the audit. Uh, we had complete cooperation um, from everybody during the audit process. So I'm going to end up the presentation going over the numbers. Um, some of this is comparative analysis. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the general fund. Um, so if you're following along, along uh, the first graph here is your revenues and expenses for the general fund. And this shows it for the last four years. Um, first thing you'll notice is revenues have gone up over the last four years. Uh, back in 2018, you were just above $1.3 million in revenues. For 2021, you were just above $1.5 million in revenues. Uh, your expenses have also gone up. Uh, you were just around $1.3 million back in 2018. Uh, you were just above $1.4 million in 2021. Um, for the last four years, the town's general fund has shown a profit. So your revenues have outpaced your expenses each of the last four years. The next graph I want to look at is your fund balance relating to the general fund. Uh, this is basically uh, your assets less your liabilities or the total profits of the town from the day one of its operations through a certain time period. So this graph starts back at June 30th, 2017 and proceeds through June 30th, 2021. Uh, back in 2017, you were just below $1.1 million in fund balance in your general fund. At the end of 2021, you're just below $1.6 million in fund balance. So your fund balance has grown about a half a million dollars over the last five years, uh, showing that the town is financially healthy. The next graph is the breakdown of your fund balance. Um, so not all fund balance is available for use. Uh, some of it's restricted. Um, you see the pieces of the pie there in red and blue, those are restricted fund balance. Uh, you can always use those for specific reasons, or some of it's restricted by general statute that relates to any monies that are due to the town. Uh, general statute say you can't spend money you have not received yet. Uh, so once you do receive that money, you're able to spend that. Uh, but the biggest piece of the pie is your unassigned fund balance. Uh, that's where it's available to spend by the town. And that was just below $1.3 million at the end of 2021. Now, what we like to do here is compare your unassigned fund balance to your expenditures in the previous year. The LGC generally likes to, likes to see that to be about the 8% range. The town is at 96%. Uh, so you have uh, outstanding fund balance numbers. Uh, shows the town is financially healthy. And basically, you have a year's worth of fund balance in place. The next couple of graphs are going to go through some comparative analysis and some uh, ratio analysis. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at cash reserves. Um, what we're doing here is comparing your unrestricted cash balances uh, to your expenditures. Um, how long can you continue operating as a town if you receive no more cash inflows? Um, and you have an outstanding number here. We generally recommend three to six months. For 2021, you have 342 days in cash reserves, so almost a year, almost double what we uh, recommend for towns to have. And that kind of goes back to where I was just saying, where you almost have 100% of fund balance in place um, compared to your annual expenditures. Uh, shows that the, the town is uh, financially healthy at the end of June 2021. The next couple of graphs are going to look at your property taxes. Um, this kind of shows how the property taxes have done over the last four years. Uh, back in 2018, uh, you uh, received $683,000 in property taxes. For 2021, it's $847,000. Uh, so your property tax revenue has gone up over the last four years. Um, however, per your next graph, your property tax rate has remained flat. There's been no increase in property tax rates over the last four years. So the revenues have gone up, but the rates have remained the same. 
And finally, I'm going to talk about with the general fund, um, how the town spent its money over the last couple of years. For 2021, uh, the largest uh, piece of the pie, uh, where you spend most of your funds, 45%, uh, was public safety. Uh, that was followed by 20% going toward general administration, and the third largest, 19% going towards streets. So you know, those are your three biggest uh, expenditures for the town, public safety, general administrative, and streets for 2021. Now, it was slightly different in 2020. Uh, public safety remained your top expenditure line item, uh, about 44%, uh, followed by your general administrative at 22%. Or however, in 2020, um, it was planning board that was 14%. So a little bit shift between streets and planning board for the two years, uh, but public safety and uh, general administration remain the top two expense line items uh, for the town. Now I'm gonna conclude talking about the water and sewer fund. Uh, 2021 was the second full year of operations. Um, and so, you know, you're looking at the graph back in 2018 and 19, you had minimal revenues and expenses, and they jumped up last year. And for 2021, uh, for 2021, you had total revenues of about $156,000 uh, compared to total expenses of about $175,000. Now, part of that expense is depreciation. Um, that's obviously a non-cash expenditure. Um, so in the last couple of years, your expenses have been more in your revenues for your water and sewer fund. However, uh, a lot of your expenses relate to depreciation. Uh, so there's nothing to be concerned about there. And finally, we're gonna talk about your cash reserves, your water and sewer fund. Now, when we do this, we do look at your cash balances and we compare it to your expenses. However, we do not include depreciation in that calculation because depreciation is non-cash. Uh, and then 2021, you had 160 days worth of cash reserves in place uh, for your water and sewer fund. Uh, so once again, that fund shows a very healthy cash balance at the end of the year. Um, so basically overall, uh, the financial health and the financial picture of the town uh, is really great at June 30th, 2021. Uh, with that, I'll be glad to take any questions you have on the audit procedures, uh, the results of the audit or the numbers themselves. I have two questions. Yes. I, hold on a second. How close do I have to get? Do I have to eat the mic? Okay. I have two questions. So you mentioned uh, early in your presentation, high risk. Did you find anything in the Wilson's Mills program that's high risk? No, uh, like I said, we, we did test controls okay. over certain areas. Um, and all the, all those issues that they were working, the controls were functioning as they should. Okay. And so there was no findings this year. Okay. The last question, uh, under your findings, uh, prior, uh, you mentioned here, prior year findings corrected. What, what did you need? What needed correcting from the previous year? Yeah, I believe the prior audit adjustments were not made, um, from the 2019 audit. So the okay. 2020 numbers did not roll forward. Now, if you do remember last year, the 2019 audit was completed late. Right. Uh, the auditor did not do what he was supposed to be doing and got the audit done late. Okay. And so we, we were trying to get the 2020 audit done quickly uh, because of the upcoming deadline. And so that did not allow time for the prior audit adjustments to be entered into gotcha. the system. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, I'm sure. If not, all in favor of the budget. Do I have a motion? Huh? Motion we accept the audit. A second. Councilman Trip made the motion to accept the audit overview. Uh, Councilman McGowan. Major second. Any other questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. The, uh, the budget overviews accept. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me out. Uh, says it's time for me to give uh, an events report. I had a uh, movie at the uh, park Friday night. And I can't even think of what the name of it was now, but 
anyway. Who? Grinch. Yeah, the Grinch. Uh, it was pretty good. If I hadn't seen it a time or two before, it'd been good, I imagine. But with three boys looking at television, you got to watch it once in a while. You have anything you want to tell you? Our Christmas tree parade on the 3rd of December went really well. We gave out, I think it was about 70 gift bags um, that Johnson County Visitors Bureau donated. And then we added a few things into them. Um, so we had a really good turnout. So we're happy with that. Thank you. Sewer report, Councilman Trippy. Do we have any updates on there? Discussion with the county. I've not heard anything back. I can contact them to see if they've got any uh, comments. We did have it for um, over a year on our side, so I was giving them a little bit of time before I started pressuring them about it. But but I'll I, I'll touch base with them. Anything else from the sewer report? Councilman Dobbins, Councilwoman Dobbins, planning and zoning report. Planning and zoning. I don't have any report, um, but the staff report is attached for your review. Any questions? Any questions on Ms. Dobbins? Police report. I'm just a minute, Phil. Are you able to keep up with what they're submitting in? Because um, if you look around the county in Smithfield, trying to come all the way up past the airport, it's, it's a prime real estate. Folks are selling left and right. Um, we're going to have to, she can't do it by herself. So we're going to have to remember this whenever they start putting these subdivisions and stuff in to get help. Anything else on the plan? Is Are we only... talking about an assistant for Wendy? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want that plain yeah. understood. Okay. If nothing else, we'll move on. Uh, police report. Councilman Ogawa. Chief Williams, would you please step forward and submit your report? Got the report in front of you. Uh, if you have any questions, be happy to ask. I don't have any questions, Steve. I, I just want to be one of them to say, well, well done on the, uh, well done on the apprehensions for the vehicle break-ins. Uh, well done for uh, Officer Joiner and that traffic stop with the, uh, uh, the the uh, the rifle, etc., and the traffic stop for the uh, the the. Uh, the drugs and the cash. Well done. I, I, and I, I can't help but think it's, you, you guys are really stepping up. I love to see it. Look, you got a hundred car stops. That's what, that's what it leads to. Thank you very much for all of your work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Seems like Donald, uh, a joiner, not Donald, but, uh, sir, officer joiner being busy. Yeah, um, well, all the guys have been busy. Everybody's stepped up to holiday season. You know, we don't have quotas or anything. We just want people to go out there and work and, you know, do what they're supposed to do. And they all do that, bar none. Anything Has every, that? have all the members of the council and the mayor, have you read the insert that uh, Chief Williams put in here? regarding rifles i was all that's what i was getting ready to refer to yeah this is this is something that the chief and i uh talked about and um he asked if he could put this in here and, and i i said yeah let's let's do it because this is something that's got this is a discussion that's got to come to the forefront and if you recall i, I think i brought this up one time several months ago chief am i correct 
That's correct. Yeah, and and now look what's happening. It's uh, it's it's coming to the forefront. Chief Williams, I'm not stealing any of your thunder, but Chief Williams did a um, did a survey of the municipalities in Johnston County. Other than Micro, which has one officer, we are the only municipality that does not have long guns. And I'm not talking about shotguns. I'm talking about <laughs> long guns to prevent our officers to help them from being outgunned. And I'm sure every one of these officers here tonight and every one of those officers that are that are at home and couldn't make it in tonight, after the, the chase that uh, Officer Joyner was involved in, where they recovered all of the stolen goods, plus money, plus drugs, plus an AR-15 with, what was it, 100 round uh, drum magazine? Uh, it was fully loaded. I don't know how many. I'm sorry, it was, what? It was fully loaded. I'm not sure exactly the amount. Typically, but... the drum magazine is 100, 120 rounds, something like that. Yeah, I, I don't care if our officers are out there armed with an M60 machine gun. They're going to be outgunned with this thing right here. And uh, I, I, for one, don't envy them having to, let alone in the broad daylight like this was, but at nighttime stopping anybody wondering what's in that vehicle now. And this is something that I think we really have to step on right now and not say, yeah, we'll get to it at some point in time. Um, I, I do not want any of our officers to be outgunned in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I, I was getting ready to address what this is. Uh, I agree with you, David, that, that we need to do it. Do we have, have we come up with a cost estimate of how much it would cost us to uh, have every officer to have a, have a long gun? Uh, have we come up with a cost estimate yet? Because I'm like you, I think we need to get it done, but we need a cost estimate of what it's going to cost us. Chief, Chief has looked into that, so he's got a response, Chief. Um, we're still waiting for some of the estimates to come back, but we did look at the Smith & Wesson uh, M&P 15 uh, tactical rifle, and its cost was about seven eighty five, seventy three cents per rifle. Could you say that again, Chief? $785. How many rifles do we rifle. need? We ate eight full time, and we would need at least two for um, for spares for part time guys if they wanted to use it. So that would be a total of a minimum of ten. Ten. But you know, taking into account that we're still growing, so you know, as we get more full time officers, we need to equip them also. So but, in other words, we probably need to look at fifteen. Um, fifteen would be perfect, but a minimum of ten, I would think. Uh, you said seven, maybe nine. Yeah, but that's pretty bare bones. With well, us. no, we don't. I don't personally. I don't want a bare bone thing. I want the best we can get. That's what we're here for. Well, so are you looking at the way my numbers come up? You're looking at a little like twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. Is that correct? That would be correct. All right. I don't see why we're waiting on this. Uh, I think we need to make that happen as quick as we can. I mean, do we need a motion or do, do we need to just tell you we, we need it? You would need to vote on that since it's above my threshold. So if that's if you want to vote on the number that you would like for him to go ahead and look into order. Right, I'll make a motion that we uh, purchase 15 long guns. If I could this add, is going to be a cost of approximately. If I could add one more thing to that. Um, again, we've grown since the last time we discussed this. Uh, we have one more full-time position that we allocated um, this summer, and we're short one taser now. Every time we grow and we get a person, the spirit that we have goes to the newest person. So now we are short one taser, and we don't have a spare for the part-timers that might want to use it. So it's a safety issue, you know, as far as, you know, what the guys are equipped with. So, so we need one more taser. Actually, we need two. Two. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we uh, – Put in an order for 15 long guns and two tasers. I don't know what the tasers cost, but by his estimate, we're looking at twelve to $13,000 for the guns. That's correct. And I don't know how much is a taser. Two tasers is about $2,800. Right. So that'll be 15, let's say 15000 We We authorize up to $15,000. That's my no. most. 2800 for two. Total for two. 
Uh, that's close to 15,000. So I make a motion that we, uh, as soon as we can, order 15 guns, two tasers at an approximate cost of $15,000. $1,000 or two above or below that cost, I think should be able to be handled within Leanna's parameters. I make that motion. Well, with with that, you've got to add an ammunition and storage fee or storage for a gun cabinet. So do we have space at town hall to store the spares with? Yes, we just have to get a gun lock or something mm -hmm. that holds two to three guns and mounted in under patrol area. Okay. What kind of ammunition are you looking like um, per officer? Because that's another cost that's going to need to be added in also. I know right now, um, five, five, six for 500 to 1,000 rounds is kind of almost impossible to get, but I know law enforcement has high priority. Yes. Yeah. Right now, the 556 five, ammo through Lawman on state contract were about three to $350 per 500 rounds. Four months to eight months to get it in. And law enforcement, they are running a lot of 556 five, right now. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and second the motion so we can continue the discussion, correct? Mm -hmm. um, much like we did years a few years ago with respect to the, uh, the cruiser situation, as you know, previous administrations, we were behind the eight ball. They kept every year. I saw it, so I'm not making it up. They would, they would toss it off and go, we'll get that next year. We'll get it next year. Um, when all along we did have the money for it. So we have corrected that and we have, we have the chiefs, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's the study that he can, he can put one of the cruisers into this study and decide if we need to replace it or not. And we've all agreed that that's something that needs to be done. And what I'm getting at is the fact that we are staying now with the cruisers one step ahead where we should be. So we're not falling behind the eight ball like we were. And with this move tonight, with the long guns, the tasers, the ammunition, the locker, et cetera, I see us doing the same thing. So all I'm saying is I'm applauding the effort of this council to do that, to make sure that every one of these officers, when they go out in that cruiser at night and they get in it, that they've got what it takes. They've got what it takes up here or else we wouldn't have hired them. They've well, got everything that it takes. Now we're providing them with the, the, uh, the hardware to do their job and stay safe. So thank you for voting for this. Uh, I would just like to, just on what you said about the ammo, my, my, my statement to that would be if I'm going to buy 15 guns, I'm going to expect us to be able to provide the ammo to it. I mean, uh, whatever that cost us, if we got 15 guns, <laughs> we need the ammo for it. I mean, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts well, about it. So. We do. I mean, well, that shouldn't be part of the, the cost of the guns. That won't, that'll be just, that's just normal operating expenses. Right. That's what I'm saying. To go which, ahead and get started, yeah. we need to go ahead and add that price into what we've got here. But that, won't, that, won't that be something that we need to adjust to the police budget for the cost of the ammo? Next year, yes. Yeah. But yeah. to get it started now, we need to go ahead and add it in. Okay. What we got. Okay, that's fine. And, and the idea of uh, the chief was talking about bells and whistles that we don't need. What he's referring to is, you know, rails for 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 lasers and 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 lights and all kinds of all kinds of goodies. Right now, maybe we can add that later on. But right now, we just need the guns. We need the weapons out there. I'd like to see that stuff added down the line, but that's going to be a function of the training department, the armor, and the chief, what they do need, what they don't need. We need to throw a figure at this thing that's going to go. It's going to solve the weapon problem. It's going to solve the, the storage, the training, and the ammunition. You had a question. You said that, you said that we, uh, we need how many rounds per gun? 300 and what? If, uh, Some other, the cost of, for, for cost 500 of rounds. About, 500 rounds would be about $300. Uh -huh. But... We can third, each gun issue out 30 rounds, one, six 
90 rounds. 90 rounds, you carry another 50 rounds to qualify. So, 4,000 rounds, give or take. And 500 costs us 300 and what? Around $300, give or take a couple. And we, you're saying 4,000? I was saying get it going good, sort of training them to issue them out, looking about 4,000 rounds. And so, eight. To, Round of dollars. Dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't, the, the, to, the total of $18,000, including the guns, the ammo, mm -hmm. and the tasers. Okay. Now I'll amend my uh, two tasers. You said eight. Two tasers. Yeah, I know. But I'll amend my motion 18. to say up to $18,000 for 15 guns, the proper amount of ammunition for those 15 guns. And two tasers. And storage. Storage locker. Yeah, and, sto and storage. And I'll second that. Councilman Trippett made the motion to purchase the 18 guns, two tasers, and uh, ammunition for the guns. Councilman McDowell. Second. In further discussion. Are our officers now, do they qualify long gun? Not now because we don't have them. Okay. So they just no. go to pistol. Yeah, I've got a handgun and shotgun qualification. Okay. And and my other question would be um I'm I'm trying to understand what we're I I don't want I don't want to have to come back and, and piecemeal. Um does does that include was that I mean would that include you know straps for the for the weapons? Um mounts for the weapons i mean you know there's more than just buying a gun i mean are you going to mount it in the car is it going to be in, i mean do, if you do then you're going to have to have mounts for the car i mean there's there i don't want to have to come back and revisit this again on another night since we're discussing it tonight right now if we need to wait if we need to wait until you can compile all those numbers then then i'm okay with that but i i won't i just you know, if you if you need straps, if you need uh, mounts in vehicles in the trunk or in the in the the passenger area, wherever you need them. Um, so I guess I guess I'm asking you: Do you need more time to compile those to be comfortable with with a number? We can get you some additional figures if you want. It just all depends on how much you know where the council wants to go as far as I call them bells and whistles. You know, I did not. Um, it's not a luxury, but you know uh, some of the bare bone stuff we uh, wouldn't necessarily need right now. But as far as the car, the mountain in the car, some of the cars I. Just want to make sure that they're accessible to, to, to these guys once they need them. My, my, mine's accessible to me once I need it. And I don't want to have to fumble around and hope I can get to it. And I don't want them to either. You know, I'm not, I'm not certainly not an expert on this, but if I were officer joiner, I'm not fast enough to go back to that trunk and get that weapon out. I don't care how fast he is. He ain't fast enough. Uh, I would personally like to see them see included in this cost, the mounts for in the vehicle where it can be taken right out. No messing around. And while we're on the topic of that, perhaps how many shotguns do we own? Four. Yeah. Can we get rid of them and, and help offset some of this cost? Cause I don't think we're going to be needing shotguns for anything. Are we? Well, some officers prefer shotguns. I mean, it just depends on the officer. I like to give them the choice. How many, how many officers would prefer a shotgun when they're faced with an AR? I'm not saying over the AR. <laughs> um, I don't see but, you know, shotgun it. has its has its purpose and yeah. use too. Well, we we can keep the shotguns, perhaps we we'll keep them in the trunk. I want the ARs in the car, but that's up to you guys, not me. I do want to add that um, in, in joiner situation, the AR-15 wouldn't necessarily lessen the threat. You know, um, unless he had gotten out of the car with the AR-15, which typically on a traffic stop, you're not going to do. 
but you know, to, to always have that option, just, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You want the officer to have as much firepower, no matter what it is, whether it's a shotgun or AR or whatever, you want to have, let him have that ability to go back and have something to use. So um, that's what we want to do from an officer safety standpoint, get them as much um, tools if, as they can to, you know, to utilize. I'll bet you everyone, when they do a car stop, are watching for an AR now. <laughs> I hope right. so. I'm, I'm glad we did it. Do you think you, in view of the, the brackets, et cetera, do you think we should just put a cap on this thing so we don't have to come back at it again? And if there's whatever extra, we can apply that towards ammunition. Just put a, I, I don't like to round figures up, but just say $20,000. That'll cover everything. Rather than come back and do this all again. I don't have a problem with that. Would, would that suffice, Chief? I think that would. All right, so I'll reamend my motion to say that we, we will spend a maximum of $20,000. I'll re-second that. On, on 15 guns, racks to hold them in the car, two tasers, and ammunition. And the storage cabinet, yeah. We got a second on that. Yep. Okay. Councilman Triffitt uh, made a motion to hold the limit to 20,000. 20,000, yes. Orders to lock them into cars and I don't know what else. Who made a second? I did. Councilman McGowan made a second. Any further discussion? I've got one comment. When these guns are signed out, we need to make sure of the background check on these people that are getting them. Mentally, particularly. Make sure some dummy don't get a gun they don't need. You down to let, can't you? Um, we're gonna have I, I don't think that would be a problem. Though. I well, mean, already from armed, childhood sir. to that's not gonna be a problem, but yeah, we can handle that. Uh, we can handle that. I, I don't see that being a problem, but we can handle that because uh, those guns are dangerous, not just to uh, you and me, but other people too. All right. All the motions. Aye. Uh, All opposed? Ayes have it. Motion is carried. You have anything else? Chief has uh, something else you'd like to bring up at this point in time. Yes. Um, Officer Barton, can you come up for a second? Real quickly, we'll have to, um, we started this last year. We like to give an award to officers um, that go above and beyond Officer Barton. I'd like to honor him with the service award 2021 for going above and beyond um, the call of duty I and mean, all the officers do what they're supposed to do and they um, they serve the community very well barton in particular um officer barton he's um we've asked him and tasked him with some additional responsibilities and some assignments and um little things like he didn't get his vehicle on time and he had to sit and wait uh, he waited patiently, didn't complain, and we just want to reward him with a 2021 service award. Thank you. Also, Dean Jordan, can you step forward? Up until the last couple of months, um, Officer Barton was given Officer Joyner a run for his money. Um, Officer Joyner is the recipient of 2020 Officer of the Year, um, but he's a two-time champ now. So I want to commend him for his hard work and dedication. Um, he does, again, everybody does well, but it seems like whatever it is, it's going to happen on his shift and he handles it very well. And he's the one that was involved in the latest incident um, that everybody's heard of 
And I can't reiterate how dangerous uh, that was. And he handled it perfectly. And he got kudos from the Sheriff's Department and other departments on his radio traffic on how he, um, the chase went across Johnston County and his radio uh, communications was, was superb. And they commended him on it and I passed that along to him. Congratulations. Top cop of the year. A different award this year. I want to stay along this line. This is the top cop for Wilson's Mill. Um, officer Matt Smith, can you stand up right quick? This is our newest part-time officer. Just wanted to introduce him to the council. He hasn't uh, had a chance to meet you guys yet. He's a, a mechanic by trade and he's coming to law enforcement a little late in life, but uh, something he's always wanted to do. So we welcome him. Thank you, Matt. Welcome. And thank you, council. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, I am. Dave. Yes. Public works to report, Councilman Jernigan. Everybody has um, Patrick's monthly um, report in front of them. Um, it's time to make a decision on what we're going to do with the building. Um, you've looked over it. I know. It says, do we need an air conditioner in the offices, two offices, the bathroom, the closet area? I don't think we need one in the closet area, but I do think we do need some type of air conditioning in the offices. Um, the exterior part, the bay part, we don't need heating and air because that's going to be an open anyway. So if we could just add in for the office space area. It was originally discussed to um, put it in that open area because you had talked about the council moving right. their meetings over there. Right. Um, again, like I put in the, in the request for action to you, I don't see a need for that when we can come here and we're already set up here and we know how to set everything up. If the maintenance building is going to be used the way I feel like it will with everything coming up, cleaning out that area just for you all to meet there when you can meet here until we get a town hall would be more trouble than yeah, it's I going to be that. worth for everybody. Yeah. yeah, I do. I agree with that. I, we can just strike the air conditioning unit out of the bay area, out of the shop area, and just um, air condition the office areas. This is for the larger of the uh, the larger of the buildings we were talking yes. about. Right. So five thousand square foot. So we don't, have to, so we don't have to upsize later on. Correct. Okay. Still the still the five thousand square feet. The only difference, um, and I think I, I put in there that I did um, have somebody look it over was to increase the concrete floor from four inches to four six, six inches. Yep. Just in case there were larger trucks. I mean, at some point, I would think we're probably going to get trash trucks or a dump truck. Yep. And then um, specifying down on the second page of the project scope, it's talking about the office and storage interior areas, what they include. And then I will change it to include the information about the heat and air. And if you'll notice on the first page, I've got it as going out. Well, I think the timeline is actually on the third page, going out the end of next week after Christmas and then being due back by February 1st. So it would be at your February 21st meeting for you to award the bid. My question is with us looking at the of the land that we're looking at for the town hall, which would probably include enough space for a, a building. Do we still look at putting this building here or do we look to get enough land at this new, new spot to not only have a town hall, but we have a, a maintenance area, a police area, and maybe even a fire department area? 
as I understand the fire department is looking to go over to that side of the road. Question. Isn't timing, timing, am I on here? Yeah, timing is a, is a big part of this in my opinion. And that's, if we, if we look to hold this off till we start and get and complete a town hall, we're still looking at three years down the line. We need this building. We needed it six, seven months ago. That didn't work. I'd like to see us proceed with it. Anybody got any other comments? Because I mean, I just answered that question. I, what, you know, we'd be, if we go with this at that location over here next to town hall now, we'd, we'd have it up within, within a year easily. Hopefully. Yeah. Whereas, whereas waiting for town hall to go up and, and make it a co-joint affair again, that's three years, <laughs> three, two to three years at least. It's a very perfect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm certainly not a building type guy, so I'm not, uh, I'm going to leave all that up to you, but I think it's a very professional and well done uh, request for a uh, proposal. I wasn't against doing the building. I'm just asking right. the question and from getting, trying to get input from all the town council members, not just one. Any other? Comments. Mr. Brown's looking mighty hard. I'm the uh, public works. We going? Are we going to tell Leanna to continue I'm, with the process of getting bids? I'll make a motion. We approve the the draft to be put out for public bid. Sorry, say I, we missed that weird. I'll make a motion. We approve the draft to be put out for public bid. I'll second that. Yes, sir. Hey. Okay. I will he made a second. Any further discussion? And just to clarify, you did say you did you wanted heat and air in the office and storage spaces and no, and, not and not the bay area. The, did you the want shop area? Any kind of um just normal the heat and uh, like a like a some kind of vented heating system yes. in that okay. Clarify. I mean, what you? Yes. Okay. Uh, to approve the bid with the vented heating system in the base and the air conditioning system for the office area. You're talking about the maintenance. in the maintenance building, yes, sir. No. Uh, anything else? That's all I have. Find that for Mr. Hudson. The reports in the um in your packets. If you have any questions. I'm very pleased with the audit outcome, the outcome of the audit as well. Uh, Ms. Sherry, the, um, the revenues coming in at 63% and you're satisfied with that. Is that standard for this time, time of year? It is That's because fine. of the ad valorem. That's fine. Thank yes. you. Just want to commend you on the work you did for the audit. I mean, uh, he, the audit was so good. I mean, yeah, uh, I was very, had, very It has pleased. to be because the, yeah. the people has presented the stuff and done the stuff the way it should be done. Right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Or Mr. Thank you, ma'am. An administrator report, Ms. Leah. I do not have a report for this part of the agenda. Do what? No report. No report. 
I'm okay. making a motion that we go. I make a motion that we go into closed session concerning NCGS one four three dash three eighteen decimal eleven A five. I will. I also want to add that we would like to invite our incoming mayor to the closed session. Yeah, I'll re-second that. And we we will um, go across the hall. We're going to be able to unlock that door, and council can go across the hall so everybody in the building doesn't have to leave this room. So. If you after you vote on that, we can go across the hall. Just everybody else can stay here, but the council is going to go across the hall. Did you vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed.
call this regular council meeting back to order at this time. The agenda says I'm supposed to make my closing comments. And that means I got to get out of here. But I've sat here at this table for 21 years and it's time for me to go. I uh, got to be old man up here. If I make it through the 29th of January, I'll be 82 years old. So I'm getting old and it's time to go. Uh, we've got a new mayor coming into, into office and uh, I don't know where she got to. Hiding behind the podium there. Anyway, I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Worley to do the swearing in, take over, and so forth at this time. And somebody can push me out in the way. No, I can get out. I can get out, JP. Huh? To solemnly and sincerely swear that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are and the authorities which are or may be established or may be established for the government thereof, for the government thereof and that I will endeavor to support and that I will endeavor to support maintain and defend maintain and defend the constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States to the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. I flee the bird. I flee the bird. Do solemnly swear. That I will execute the duties. That I will execute the duties of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. For the town of Wilson's Mills. For the town of Wilson's Mills. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. It's Leanna. She's supposed to come up here now. I can get up here. Do solemnly and sincerely swear <laughs> that I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers. And authorities which are. And authorities which are. Or may be established. Or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government thereof. And that I will endeavor to support. And I will endeavor to support. Maintain and defend. Maintain and, de and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. 
So help me God. I Tim Brown. I Tim Brown. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will well and truly. That I will well and truly. Execute the duties of the office. Execute the duties of the office. Of town council member. Of town council member. For the town of Wilson's Mills. For the town of Wilson's Mills. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Again. Do solemnly and sincerely swear. Do solemnly and sincerely swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. To the constitutional powers. And authorities which are. And authorities which are. Or may be established. Or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government thereof. And that I will endeavor to support. And that I will endeavor to support. Maintain and defend. Maintain and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. I, Randy Jernigan. I, Randy Jernigan. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will well and truly execute. That I will well and truly execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office of town council member, of town council member for, the town of Wilson's Mills, for the town of Wilson's Mills, according to the best of my skill and ability, according to the best of my skill and ability, according to law, according to law. So help me God. So help me God. I, David McGowan, do solemnly and sincerely swear. Do solemnly and sincerely swear that I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers and authorities which are and authorities which are or may be established. Or may be established. And that I will to support, maintain, and defend, maintain and defend the Constitution of the United States. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. I, David McGowan, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will well and truly that I will well and truly execute the duties of the office. The duties of the office. For the town of Wilson's Mills. For the town of Wilson's Mills. For the town of Wilson's Mills. According to the best of my skill. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to law. According to law. Well. leaving uh we're going to give you a little flat and it doesn't do justice for all the things that you have done for the town for all the years you have worked hours you have put in extra stuff you've done going over and beyond the duties of councilman and the duties of mayor we as a town thank you
quite welcome. For the most part, I've enjoyed it. I don't know. I'm as ready right now as I'm going to be. <laughs> okay. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Maybe I'm getting here close enough. Um, okay. I call us back to order. Let me put my glasses on. Uh, it is time for us to appoint uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, the council needs to uh, nominate somebody or talk about who you want to have that position. I'm going to give you my two cents worth. One we've got is doing a good job. Uh, you keep him on Mayor Pro Tem. I nominate J.C. Triplett as Mayor Pro Tem. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. The next order of, you got, oh, we got to give him his oath. I forgot. You got to take your oath. I forgot, Leanna. Y'all have to remind me because I'm new at this. She's coming. <laughs> do no. Hi, JC Triplet. Do solemnly and sincerely swear that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina, to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof and that I will endeavor to support maintain and defend the Constitution of the United States to the best of my knowledge and ability so help me God I JC Triplett do solemnly swear that that I will well and truly execute the duties of the office the duties of the office of mayor pro tem, of mayor pro tem for, the town of Wilson for the town of Wilson Mills according to the best of my skill according to the best of my skill and ability according to law according to law so help me God, so help me God. thank you Now we need to talk about assigning liaisons. Um, and I would like to do something differently. I would like for us not to have liaisons. It is not something that a lot of towns do anymore. It would free up the staff to be able to address any of council about any problem they might have. The staff does the reporting anyway. Uh, it would mean that if, if Wendy had a problem with planning and she thought that Tim could answer her, she could go to Tim and not have to go through Carolyn, uh, it would just free everybody up. 
it would free us up to be able to go to any of the staff and maybe we have an idea here that we want them to do a project, we wouldn't have to go through a liaison. Uh, there's only one thing that I want council to remember. If you do have a project and you do want a staff member to do it, the first person you got to talk to is your town administrator. It's not going to say that, okay, I'm not a liaison, we don't have liaisons, and I can just do whatever with my staff. You, everything has to run through the town administrator. But I want y'all's opinion, I want your suggestions, because one thing I want this council to remember, everybody sitting at this table has an opinion. You have a voice and you are an elected official, except our attorney, and you are to be heard by the members of the town. Your opinion counts, your voice counts. We need to know it, we need to hear it. We cannot make decisions if we don't know what you're thinking. If you agree with everything we're talking about, let us know. If you disagree with everything we're talking about, let us know. But we need to hear from you. So council, what do you think about liaisons? I guess I'll go first. I've only been here for on, on the uh, on the council for four years, and um, I personally like it. I think there's a degree of accountability. Um, if someone has a question, they know who they can go to. If the chief has a question, for example, I've been the police liaison for four years, uh, uh, principally because I have a, a fair amount of experience and I can relate to him and I can, I can help him with things that need to be brought to council. I can relate to both the council and the police department. If somebody comes to me with a sewer question, I'm out in left field somewhere. I think there's people here that know about sewer, they know about planning, they know about building and maintenance and grounds and parks. I, I know about the police side. I like to see accountability myself. It would not stop Chief from still coming to you. No, I understand. I'm just saying, I, I just, I like the, you know, we're, we're, we don't have, uh, we're, we're all at large. So we don't represent any group or any area in particular. We all, we represent all of Wilson's Mills. I just think there's got to be some degree of uh, accountability. Yeah, that's all. That's the only way I can phrase it right. Phrase it right now because it's kind of they're sitting at the table. No, I understand they're they're sitting at the table, but I I just like being able to come up and and give reports with the police department and and here and know when if I have a question on maintenance, I I'll I'll go to Randy first and Randy can answer that because he'll talk to Patrick. It takes it away from Leanna having to do and, and get her fingers in a lot of this stuff. She's got enough to do. If someone has a question about what are we doing about police cruisers, they come to me and I'll go talk to the chief. Uh, that's just the way I feel. I, I like a little bit of accountability. It's not a lot. We're not responsible for our areas. Uh, I agree with uh, Fleet. I think it's time the most town manager municipalities don't have liaisons. I mean, I know Clayton. Clayton didn't have liaisons. I, I, you know, and I agree with David in some sense that he knows a lot about uh, police work. That's fine. That's where the chief should go if he has a question. But before the chief goes to him, the chief needs to go to the town administrator because that's the person that's supposed to make that that decision and 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 be the supervisor of them. If somebody needs to talk to somebody about planning, they need to go to Wendy before they go to the town council person because she knows more about planning than any of us knows. Same way with some of the other things. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm for not having liaisons, but that's up to everybody else. I've been on the board for, this would be my fourth term. Um, we've always had liaisons, but to me, a liaison restricts you to one area. Um, I think all the board members need to be well-rounded in all areas. 
I've learned the maintenance stuff. I've learned some of the sewer stuff, the police stuff. Um, we need to know more about everything. Um, Leanne is your first point of contact anyway. And the way we're growing, we're going to have to go to a manager based board anyway. So it's going to have to start somewhere and we might as well go ahead and start it now. Um, it's not taking any way from any of us because we're still going to make the decisions, but we have to make sure because we, we've got the right people in the right places to make these decisions. Don't bind them by waiting a month to come back to us. And the more we grow, the more manager base we're going to have to be. Okay. Well, it does not matter with me, but um, I have not been, I've been here two years. I've not been on the planning board, but maybe five, six, not long. But um, Wendy does it anyway. You know, the only thing I do is just, um, well, I listen to whatever. And, you know, if anything dealing with uh, the lots and all of that stuff, Wendy does that. I don't know anything about planning. I'm just going to let you know that. I don't know anything about that. But if somebody comes to me and asks me a question that I don't know, um, I will feel it's, it's okay for them to go somewhere else to somebody else that knows about planning because I don't know about planning, you know. Um, so it does not matter with me. But I would prefer just to get rid bit of the liaisons and just call each person, anybody that know, is familiar with whatever that you're asking about, you know. Um, and then if we can't help them, anybody else couldn't help them, just go to um, Seattle. Or Felita, or to our mayor. It does not matter. <laughs> well, I'm the new kid on the block here. I've been here for six months. And I'll tell you the one thing when, when, when this board appointed me in Phillip's position, the one, one thing that scared me to death was that word events. If you want an event to happen, I'm not the person to get an event done. It, I mean, that, that was the one thing. And I was, and, and I, I was so thankful that, that Philip kept that and, and, and didn't pass it along to me. So from, from the new kid on the block that hasn't been a liaison, I don't care to be a liaison. I think, and, 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 and I mean that in all sincerity, but, but I think that we have a good staff in the town hall that, that is, has, has been doing it. So, I mean, from my six months experience, that's, that's just, that's about all I can say. Leanna, you have any comments? Um, well, to touch on what Mr. Jernigan said, we, you all are going to be moving toward a manager council form of government very soon. It's not going to be long. You're just growing too fast. There's too much going on to not. And you talked about that in your, the past couple of budget retreats that you've had. But as it stands, even without liaisons, I think our staff is is confident enough to know that if they feel like they can't come to me as the administrator or whoever is, is going to be a manager at some point, that they would know who on the council would be the most experienced in whatever it is that they have a question about. And it may not necessarily be specifically about their department. It could be something going on um, in an HR manner. It could they don't be, feel comfortable coming to me. and right. they need to It could come be to something they wanted to ask you. Right. So um, about you to, to speak on Mr. McGowan's comments, I don't know that, you know, the chief understands that your experience and, and even Mr. Jernigan's experience with 911, he knows that if he has specific questions, who he's still going to come to yeah. if it's not something that I can assist him with. So, yeah. um, you know, 
know, it, does, it doesn't cut anybody off from anything. It actually mm -hmm. opens everybody up to yes, a lot more. That, that's what I think it does. It opens us all up to be able to communicate with the whole staff and not think that we have to just go to one staff member. Do we need to vote on this, Leanna? Is that something? I'm going to defer to council, but our, our, you know, it's a policy and procedure thing. It's not a charter thing for us. It's just something we've always done. So, yeah, I mean, I think you cut me a little flat footed on that. <laughs> I don't know where the origination of the liaison is. And, and, you know, if it's in fact a policy issue, then, then, then that's all that needs to be said on it. Um, you can have a, you can take a vote on it if you want just to, you know, to have it on the minutes, spread out on the minutes, but um, you don't need to worry about the process as if it was a charter amendment, which would be not something we could do tonight. Okay, do I have a motion that we do not have liaisons? Motion that we do not have department liaisons during this two year period. Okay, do I hear a second? Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Trippett and a second by Mr. Jernigan. All in favor? Uh -huh. All opposed? I'll stand on principle <laughs> and go no. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> okay, the next thing we have is um, approval of our holiday schedule for 2022, and it's in your packet. I'll make a motion we approve the 2022 holiday schedule. Okay, we have a motion by Randy Jernigan and a second by Carolyn Dobbin. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The next on the agenda is the approval of the meeting schedules and this is the meeting schedule for town council and for the planning board i make a motion we approve the 2022 dates and times for council and planning board meetings do i have a second second okay councilman mcgowan made the motion councilman jernigan seconded all in favor Aye. Aye. all opposed carried Okay. The next item is a discussion of the newsletter. Yeah, that's, um, I got to find it first. Hold on. Da, 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 da. I think one of the, the, the base articles that we've all spoken about or base things we've spoken about in the past two or three meetings is the rate at which Wilson's Mills is this up high enough okay the rate at which Wilson's Mills is growing and I've often thought that we've got so many people out here now that that absolutely do not know so many of the basics the essentials of Wilson's Mills I, I talked to some of the new folks coming in and they go well, I live in Smithfield. I don't live in Wilson's Mills. Or I live in Clayton. And you got to go through this long explanation. That's just an example of so many things that people don't know about. Um, and they don't know that, that uh, the town administration is, we're looking to move our town hall. They don't know look, what we're looking to do down here. They, if they don't get their information from the, the sunshine list or the, the bulletin board or a sign that's placed on the Wilson's Mills uh, town hall property, they really don't know what's going on. So I, I was, I'm of the opinion, uh, and email just does not work. You're not going to get anybody's email address. They won't give it to you. So that's out of the question. So are text messages. So I felt that it would be nice to have, and I'm certainly not finished with this yet, but a, a small newsletter that we can send out to current resident doesn't have to be an address and, and I, I certainly have to go in and I've been looking at trying to find something that's going to be inexpensive for us to have sent out in a bulk mail but all it has to be and if you read this uh, little thing that I put out it's just it's just one page uh, it can be a page and a half it can be two pages with room for resident whatever that's all um, of what's happening in Wilson's Mills, what we're doing. Uh, counselor, you didn't know that you've been hired full time. 
but that's for those of you that have read this, you'll see that he's now <laughs> that, that's just an example of, of some of the things. They don't know that we have a counselor. You know, he's on retainer, of course, but at some point in time when we hire one or hire an engineer, these are things that people need to know. They need to know where their tax dollars are going. They don't see anything. They don't know anything. If they don't read it, and they half of them don't read, they don't even know about Joko News, which is where you're going to find all the information you need for what's happening in the county, not just Wilson's Mills. They go, what are all those sirens for last week? Well, if you read it, you'll find that Officer Joyner was on a chase. And look what he did. And look what we're doing. We're, we're taking care of our police department tonight. So highlights of the town council meeting, uh, highlights of the planning board meeting, uh, events committee meetings, what have you, things that are coming up in the park. Hey, we're gonna get a new little league or a rugby league started. They have no clue. And how do, how do we get that information out? I say, if we, if we have the money for it, and it's not going to cost a lot of money, I, I can't put a number on that, but I would like just a consensus. It doesn't require a vote. A consensus by this, this board, or this council, that we're interested in doing something like this and to just be able to continue on and look at it and see what it's gonna cost. And if it's within a budget that we can handle, Let's go ahead and do it. Let's find somebody who's, who's got a journalism degree or always likes to write and can just do this stuff and get it out. Uh, did you know that we used to have a newsletter? Well, you see, that's what I don't know. We had a I newsletter. I know we had a Little League at one time, we but that had, went by the way. We so. had a newsletter okay. when Patty Cadell was mayor, and we sent it out for over a year. And we sent it to every person that was registered on the tax registered for Johnston County because we got the tax. If they owned property in Wilson Mills Township, okay. they got a newsletter. Good. And what we found out what? was that the people were saying, oh, that thing, I throw that in the trash. Well, and it had good information. Let's look. But they, they would not read it. Now, they will go on Facebook. Right. Social and, media. And, and they will go on mm -hmm. the town's page. Because I asked some people, when you put this in here, I asked some people, if you wanted to know what Mil Wilson Mills was doing, where would you go? And they told me Facebook or the town page. But they would not pick up a piece of paper. Your newspapers are going downhill fast because people won't read them. But we found out that the letters that we were mailing out and we were mailing, I, I know because I have folded them and help put the stamps on the letters and stuff on them. They were throwing them in the trash can because they'd look at the address, return address was Wilson Mills, town of Wilson Mills, in the trash can it went. How many folks in the audience that are out here tonight get their news from Wilson's Mills by going on Facebook? Do you? You get all your news from Wilson's Mills on Facebook. <laughs> I rule out, I'm sorry, Donald, but I rule out JDs. <laughs> No, I no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying news, not awesome. say, not rumor. Okay, there's a lot well, of things. I'm just saying. There's we, a lot of things that come out of JDs, and I understand that. There's, yeah. <laughs> see, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. Oh, I know it is. I know it we, is. But we have had a newsletter, and yeah. it it, what, it got the, to the point that it was so expensive, right, well, and no people were not responding to it. But maybe the, I maybe think. The, if we could get a newsletter like you've got and put it on Facebook or have it on the website so that people could do it that way, whatever it takes, that would probably be good. And Leanna, what's the, the web? You gave it on my phone today. What? I don't, I can't remember what it was. The app that we just started this year that's replacing the Blackboard Connect is called C Click Fix. And it actually has a, a homepage where we can add links on that homepage. I'm just going to try to pull it up so I can show it to you. It is, is awesome. She put it on my phone today, and it's the, the material so, that you can get on it is. Yeah, I mean, we, and we talked about it in the beginning when we got it, and then we talked about it the next month. Um, and I'm, I'm going to put a little plug in here because we've actually replaced Blackboard Connect with this app, and we have 20 maybe 20 or 25 people that have signed up. But this actually gives you the opportunity to report a problem that you see in town. Um, anything from 
a nuisance in planning. Show, to show a, that to David. No, I know what it is. Oh, okay. I, I know what it is. Yeah. So, but on the home page, we have the option to add links. We've already got our Facebook linked, our YouTube channel linked. There's a link for, that people can click on to pay their sewer bill. We could add other links if we wanted to add a, a, newsletter. a newsletter link. It would go straight to one page of our website and they could just pull up the newsletter. But this, I mean, this app is really useful and we, we don't have a lot of people in town who have signed up and it. it's called C Click Fix. And if you have a question about how to spell it or how to get it, it should be on any iPhone or Android. It's, that is also on our Facebook page and our website. Sign up for it because you can report stuff and then you actually get information back about what the status is of what you've reported. If you see a pothole, is it being worked on? Has it been completed? If you see trash somewhere, has it been picked up? Who was it assigned to? Who's, who's working on it? Who do I contact if I have a question mm -hmm. about it? it? All of that is on there whenever you download this app. And you can, you can also get to it on, on their website too, correct? Yeah, so if you're not good with apps on your phone, you can go to the website and do the same thing. And but it's got a lot of information. And David, th this is what I'm saying. I, I think the newsletter is an excellent idea. I just don't think mailing it is an excellent idea because I don't think the people are going to respond to it. I think you're going to hit them better if you get it on social media. That's just my opinion. Boy, I'm just going down the toilet tonight, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to have to agree with Felita in that this, this world is becoming an internet world. A lot of, I mean, we had the Clayton News Star. It's no longer in existence. Yeah, we used to have a news We got the Smithville Herald. Yeah, we used to have a news I mean, everything, even, even the News and Observer, people are going online to read the News and Observer. They're, you know, uh, the News and Observer, when they send out the stuff now, there's very little stuff in it. You need to go online. So to me... I don't have a problem with getting the information together and, and putting it online, but I just don't think we need to spend the money to cop, to make copies, fold them and send them out because they're going to do exactly what Felita said. They're going to throw it in the trash. And, uh, but if they're interested in finding out something about what's happening in Wilson Mills, go to JD. They'll go online. <laughs> no, they'll go online. Might go to JD's too, but they'll go online and they'll see what's going on because it's online. You can find it. You know, I, I, for example, me, I, I'm, I, I, I'm interested in, I've always been interested in Clayton High School Athletics because I taught, taught and coached there for 30 years. I don't look at the paper anymore. I go online to find out what's going on. I go to find out how the football team did. I wanted to go on there and find out how the basketball team's doing. I go online. I don't go to the newspaper because online you get it quicker because you get it the next day. And I, I agree with you. Let's split this. Let's split this down the middle because I don't get newspapers either. <laughs> I don't, I don't, but I do want people to understand what's happening in our little town here. And, and it's not going to be a little town for long. We're going to have a lot of thousands more that are going to go who's wilson's mills and why do i have a clayton address for god's sake we need to be able to explain this we really do so here's let's let's split it down the middle all right so we're big on facebook let's do this let's have somebody do this and put a link on facebook they're not i'm not going to go onto the town's facebook page and sit there and just read all that stuff but if there's a link there that's going to be to the town paper okay they can click on that and there it is Okay, now I have. Okay, a, I don't I, want a great big long Facebook thing because I'm not going to read it. We want one page, unless it's aviation or. Okay, now who who in town hall is going to do this? No, nobody in town hall. I'm saying we find somebody who who, who likes who takes okay, who wants this, to take an interest in this and can this, do it. This this is still a problem. You're talking about town news. It's going to have to go through Leanna. If you read this, you'll see that Leanna is proofing it. I know. Has Leanna got time to do that? Sure, she does. I'm not looking at her. Leanna, I ain't gonna look at her. Le Leanna, you can hit him. You have my I permission. I ain't gonna look at her. 
Well, no, she, if Leanna can't do it, Emily can do it. Or, or one of the, <laughs> Hey, you know what? Emily, we've can't got do council it. members here who have <laughs> nothing better to do. Anymore. Oh, you volunteer. Huh? Now you're like, no, I'm the only council. <laughs> no, I'm the only council member that has a job. I have oh, to no, do sir. the. I have, I have to no do story. the. T, I have to do the TJ Cog meetings every month. So I do it. All right. Okay. So there, we can find somebody somewhere well, I'm I, looking for the whole thing in principle. Let's do this. Let's put it on Facebook as a link. Let's find somebody who can write it. Okay. I I agree that and we need to we'll look into proofed, that. We'll get it proofed, not for typos, but for accuracy. That's all. Well, now you need typos because one of the one, let me just tell you a little story. One of the newsletters that went out from the town of Wilson Mills went out without anybody proofing it. And when the mayor looked at it, I think she found like 20 or 30 misspelled words and grammar errors. It was, and that's when she said no more. See, oh. we don't want our town to be that. We'll have somebody that can spell. Okay. And then somebody had to gather that information too, right? Yeah. You got to gather. You guys that. are shooting me down here. I'm just trying to help out for God's sake. <laughs> well, I Holy. think, I think it's it a great idea. Got, so I just th want this... the folks in Wilson's Mills to understand what's happening. Now they just can... move into town and they go. Can we leave it like oh, we this? We don't do town meetings. Can we leave it like this? That we let leave Leanne. Any way you want, we let. Le we let Leanna work and see what she can do about doing this and bring it back to us next month. Mm -hmm. Sure. The next item on the agenda is the memorandum of understanding with the University of Mount Olive. Leanna, would you like to explain this? Sure. So the University of Mount Olive has a program, it's in your packet. Um, called TAP, which is the Trojan Alliance Partnership, and they actually have partnered with um, different municipalities in Ann Johnston County, and it's basically just a way for them to um, try to beef up their registration. So they just offer a 10 to 30% discount based on the number of credit hours that you're enrolled in if you are a participating local government employee and your local government participates in this program with them. You get the you get the discount. It doesn't cost us anything. It just basically the the agreement is is just us saying that we understand that if one of our employees um, enrolls at the University of Mount Olive, that they're going to get this discount even after they're no longer if they no longer are an employee of the town. As long as they're enrolled, they still continue to get the discount. Um, but I'm, I, I mean, it doesn't cost us anything. It's just a benefit for our employees. So uh, there's we, no downside either. No downside. I mean, is it? We we do need a vote on this. You do. You I need make, to vote. To I make a motion. We approve the memorandum of understanding between the town of Wilson's Mills and the University of Mount Olive. I will second. Councilman McGowan made the motion. Councilman Jernigan seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. They say here it's now time for me to give my opening comments. I already have. Um, I'm just here to serve, um, to work with you, to make our town better. Um, this is not a one-man show. It's all of us working together. We've got a lot of people in Wilson Mill, a lot of people coming, and we've got to be prepared for them. We've got to make sure that what we do, everything we do is for our citizens and that we do it correctly. And um, I look forward to a good year and I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I would just like to say, as, as I said earlier, being the, the new person on the block, um, I think we've had some, since my short tenure, that we've, I've gotten to, to know the staff more and and i think we have a top-notch staff i think we have appointed made some appointments that that are that are outstanding for our community not just now but but in the future looking forward um looking at the growth that that, that this town is going to to be seeing in the next five to seven ten years um i think it's important that we plan for our children and our grandchildren and, and what we would like for them to, to inherit 
from, from the decisions that this council and, and future councils and even past councils have, have decisions have been made. Um, I, I'm just honored to, to be able to serve the people of Wilson's Mills. Uh, I, I, I agree with you, Mayor. I, I think we need to hear from the people. I, I agree totally with, with David. We, we, we need not a lot, not, not a lot now, right. not a lot. Right. Don't, don't, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> but, um, but I think the people of, of Wilson's Mills need to know what's going on. Um, and, and we need to, to make every effort that we can to, to, to voice those, those things. And because we do want their involvement, we want them to know what's going on in their town and, uh, and, 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 and help hold us accountable as, as councilman, as, as mayor. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to be able to, to serve this term. And I as well would like to wish everybody in, in, in town a Merry Christmas. Thank you. First off, um, I want to thank Philip. Um, up here, he was like my dad. I learned a lot, a lot of useful information from Philip. We didn't always agree, but we were able to come to terms and the board was able to make decisions that were best for the community. Um, Philip was up here 21 years and I've been up here 12 with him and not being able to see him up here kind of hits you in the heart. Um, Fleta, I've, I've worked with Fleta and this board is going to keep moving. We, we can't stop. We can't go backwards. We have to keep moving forward. That's what the citizens put us up here for. Um, and it's, it's people like Philip that have grown this community to what it's going to be. They'll know Philip 40, 50 years down the road for decisions we made 10 years ago. And that's the way it needs to be. We need to keep making these decisions, moving in the right direction, providing for our citizens. Yes, they need to know what we do. I'm not going to put it all on us because they need to make effort too. It's just like this board. Three of us ran. That was it. We've got to have more community involvement because if we don't have any community involvement, it's going to be this neighborhood, this neighborhood, this neighborhood. We need to be one. We don't need to be separated. Um, who knows where we're going to be in the next 10 to 15 years with growth. You will never see Wilson's Mills like it was last year without dirt being on 70 Highway, without farms being through the middle of town. Everything's going to houses, and we just need to progress and move forward and do the best we can make the right decisions for the citizens. Ms. Bird, you were offered a planning and zoning officer. Yeah, I was. <laughs> You've seen where it's come from and where it's going. You know where it's going. Um, I'm glad to have you, your knowledge and skills. Nobody else better than to work in that line. Thanks. You and Wendy will be wonderful working together. Um, David, you're David. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I talk junk to you, but you – Everybody does their own part. You bring the Yankee to Wilson's Mills. <laughs> but I work for the Orioles, not the Yankee. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Tim, I've worked with you a long time. I've worked with you at the prison. Maintenance, that's your specialty. We, we could get a lot of useful knowledge out of that. So this goes back to where everybody needs to work together and everybody needs to be approachable. Um, all I got. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Be careful. Um, and if you didn't know, 70 Highway is now the rec capital of Johnston County. So <laughs> yeah. watch your intersections. Yeah. I guess it's my turn. I'm not very good at ad libbing and speaking, but I'll give it my best shot. Ouch. First off, I wasn't aware that Randy and Tim met in prison. <laughs> 
You learn things every day. Yeah, you learn something every day. I want to piggyback on what Randy said, and I'll keep my my stuff as brief as I possibly can. Philip, I want to thank you for um, being the, uh, the 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 shining light here, the guiding example, if you will. Um, I've never run for anything in my life. I've run from things, but never run for anything. And uh, when, when I ran for council the first time four years ago, Philip taught me how to do it and do it the right way. And uh, I did it this past, uh, this past election period, wore myself out. So I know what Philip went through that first time. So uh, thank you, Philip, for everything that you've done for this town. And I've sat through every board meeting, not just the four years that I've been here on the council, but I've sat through every council meeting since uh, I moved here in August of uh, 2015. And I think starting in October of 2015, I haven't missed a board meeting or a, uh, a council meeting, I should say, or a budget meeting. Never have I missed anything. But Philip has always been there. And I've always been impressed with the way Philip handled everything and kind of cut to the chase on everything. So thank you, Philip, for everything that you've done. We certainly do appreciate it. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to have run again uh, because I felt that I had more work to do here in Wilson's Mills. Um, I've done a couple of things that I've been proud of and I've, I can't say I've ever been more proud than working with a council like this with all you guys, Randy, uh, Ms. Dobbins, all of you folks, just been wonderful. And, and I come away from every meeting with something positive um, and, and I move on from there. So thank you all for what you do. Thank you to the uh, citizens of Wilson's Mills for uh, having faith in me and voting me uh, to sit up here for another four years. Um, Ms. Bird, congratulations, and I look forward to working with you for another full four years. Okay. Do any of the other council have anything to say? We have an opportunity. I just want to say that um, I have enjoyed, I've worked, I've been here two years, uh, town council. And I enjoy working with each of you. I really have enjoyed it. I've learned a lot, you know, and especially from you, Wendy, I've, I've learned a lot. Um, but um, just continue to pray for me. And Merry I'll Christmas. Just, I'm sorry. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, I was fortunate to come in six years ago. Uh, I'm looking forward that we've got the exact same council. That, I, I said, I'm fortunate to have come in six years ago. I got reelected and uh, I'm looking forward to working with this same council for the next two years. I think we're going to, everybody has good ideas. We don't all agree all the time, but that's what it's supposed to be about. We might disagree, but we would disagree the right way. We, we handle it the way it should be handled. And that's what I'm looking forward to is continuing to work for the town of Wilson Mills. And as Fleeta said, we need to get more of the younger people involved in this town. And however we need to do it, we need to figure out how to do it. But uh, let, let's, uh, let's give the town the two more years that I've been here. Let's give them everything we've got. It's now time for the second open forum. If anyone has anything they want to say, please come forward, state your name, your address, and limit your comments to three minutes. I don't know what time. Everyone right about one thing we've got to get our community involved how we do that i'm not 100 percent sure david's right in doing something or having an idea about a newsletter but i think the internet is the way to do it whether you start by publishing the minutes of every meeting or whatever you choose to do liana but that's a way to connect we started out with 500 people. Now we've got 3,000 people. We've got uh, permits for 3,100 houses. In two years, we're going to have 6,000 people. In five years, we're going to have 10,000 people. And they need to be a voice, not 130 or 40 people making the decisions for this town and this budget. 
And item number two, don't build this utility building without having heating and air conditioning in the whole thing. You don't have to run it, but it needs to be there. And that's the cheapest time to do it when you construct that building. Uh, I've got two that I built and I wish I'd have done that same thing, but at the time I felt like I couldn't afford it. So now is the time and we need that building diligently, as you all know. You don't need to wait. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? I'm Donald Bird, 755 Powertown Road. Uh, sitting out here in the audience tonight, listening to every one of you, there's one thing that we need to do, and I don't take nothing away from the chief. We need to take about five or six hundred dollars of his money. Get all of you a little pale, Mike, so we can hear you. <laughs> this year, him has to cut it up, cut down, cut it up, cut down. There's no sense in that. Every time you turn your head, just get a little mic, put on your pail. We even got him in the church. We don't even want people to talk. <laughs> and uh, then everybody can hear you. That's all I got to say. Mayor Bird, I just wanted to make a comment too because I've I've heard this comment two or three times in the past few months. The every set of minutes for the planning board and the town council are put on our website as soon as they are approved. And I believe the agenda for the upcoming meeting is on the website as well the week before the meeting. So anybody who's listening or in the audience, if you have a question about what happened at a meeting, as soon as they're approved, they're put on the website. We do not put the draft ones up, but we, put, we do put the approved ones up. Right, and that's what you okay. need to do. Just a quick question then, if they're, if they're up, if we do something like this newsletter and we post it on Facebook with a link to the newsletter at the end of the month, it'll have, we can, refer to the minutes being up and, and posted on the town's website At, after their assignments are approved right after so i'm they, saying if we, yeah. if we do something like i'm talking about and we do it towards the end of the month like the last week of the month or so the minutes will all be up do you think by then the minutes for last month yeah for the, for the month previous before, month. right yeah yeah okay. yes sir right. all right sean fritz 46 wood glen drive um first of all congratulations to the mayor um thank you sir. I told the people at my office uh, that I was running for mayor and they said, well, they left. Uh, and then, uh, and then after I, I had lost, I said, uh, they said, how'd you do? I said, well, I lost. I said, how many? 12, 12 votes. I said, can you demand a recount? I said, absolutely not. There weren't that many votes to count. Um, so uh, to, to piggyback on David's idea of a newsletter, uh, we have the thing with Mount Olive that you were just talking about a few minutes ago. Um, why not hire somebody from there who just graduated, give them real world experience to write a newsletter, they're cheap, and they would know all the journalistic rules, do interviews, whatever. Um, that's just an idea, run with it. The other item is why not put some at JD's or put a QR code, since everything is online, put a QR code somewhere at JD's with their permission, of course, right, David? Um, and and uh, that way it automatically updates every month. You scan it, it's always there. You scan it in June, it brings up the June newsletter. You scan it in December, it brings up the December newsletter. It's the same, you don't have to print anything all the time or you print a 20 to 50 and put them at JD's. And because that is, if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard word on the street is that the word on the street is uh -huh, at JD's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and yes, we have... I have been looking into some better audio equipment, but until we have a permanent home, I think it's as good, good as it could get, get at the moment yeah. without piecemealing things because that never works. I know, but. Well, then you need a pocket. I don't have a crazy pocket for anything <laughs> today, but there, you know, there, there, those are my comments. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. My name is Chase Bradley, 749 Paratown Road. Most of y'all know me. 
most of y'all know me on my life, uh, except for uh, about two council members. Um, congratulations to those who got elected. Grandma, congratulations. If you don't know, she's my grandmother. Um, it's a good thing that we're trying to get out of the community. I've been here 27 years, and if I want to know anything about town council, I ask two people, and they're both sitting in this room. <laughs> so, I mean, otherwise, I have, I mean, until recently, Facebook, you do need a way to reach out, uh, whether it's Facebook or the town, uh, the town website, however y'all do it, it does need to be done. Um, and I applaud y'all for trying to do that. So thank you. Merry Christmas. So we can count on you running next election because we need, we need young blood. Never run for anything. Amanda Jones, 753 Power 10 Road. Um, I just want to say piggybacking off of what um, Sean said. What's your name right? Um, the QR code is the way to go. And I say that because I work at Carolina Premium Outlet. And whenever we do something new, everything's with a QR code. So if you're wanting to reach my age and younger, and I'm 48, you need to go with QR code because everybody scans the QR codes. And for you to have your newsletter or your information that's going on in the town on that QR code, that's the best way to go. Just my two cents. I actually had no idea what a QR code was until my son <laughs> went to look for a car and the salesman says, take your phone and scan that with your camera. And it gives you the price and gives you everything on it. About about a month ago, I had no idea what it was. Our business cards have had a QR code on them for about five years now. I think we just stopped it about a year ago. All of our business cards have that on it. it takes them to the website or to the page. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Okay, the open form is closed at 9.04. I'll second. All in favor? Merry Christmas, everybody.